Living Seed Media brings to you God's Word, which is His comprehensive equipment for changing lives. May the Lord impact your heart as you encounter His Word. For further inquiry or counsel, contact Peace House, P.O. Box 971, Boko, Benue State, Nigeria. Telephone numbers 0703 036369 0703 768 198 Email address lsmedia at org, or visit our website at www.livingseed.org Let us sit back and listen as the servant of God brings forth the word of life. Father, this morning, keep us near the cross. That is where every offense is terminated. That is where the enmity between us and God is abolished. That is where that which came into the life of Adam and he could no longer dwell in the garden of God's service only at the cross was it crushed and this morning Father every hindrance to our lives every hindrance to our ministry every hindrance to the anointing Lord crush it in the name of Jesus Christ every blockage everything that will turn your eyes away from us everything that will make a man to, to run dry in the ministry everything that will make us mere talkative without the power of God this morning Father crush it in the name of Jesus Christ Lord we are asking all men that came to the cross that was where their victory came. That was where their, their heavens were opened. That was where, oh God, everything was declared. It is finished. We are asking this morning, Father, that you take us to that place again where every hindrance is finished. Where every struggle is finished. Where every walk of sin and of the flesh is finished. Take us there in the name of Jesus Christ and keep us near the cross. Cause our eyes to see it every day. Thank you, Lord. Father, please open your word to us and let it mix with faith in our hearts. We ask that this morning you will start a work with us and you will not leave us until you are finished. Thank you, Father. In Jesus Christ's name, we have prayed. Amen. This morning I would like to begin to consider our theme, the crucified life, preaching him crucified. The crucified life, preaching Christ crucified. But before we can get into the crux of this particular message there will be a need for us to do some general preamble why any man that will have effective ministry must come to the cross and why any man who has not been to the cross who has not experienced the crucified life is of a very little use in the work of God why any man who has not experienced the cross and not that he has experienced the cross historically who has not been experiencing the cross on a daily basis 
why it cannot amount to anything in the work of God no matter what he does why whatever he does will not weigh anything seriously in the presence of God and as we study I want to urge you brothers and sisters that if there is anything if there is any place where genuine effective ministry begins it begins at the cross for any man every manifestation that will last that will endure that will be eternal and that will draw men to heaven any message that we will preach and we hook the hearts of men and keep them hooked for a long time it cannot come unless the preacher himself had come to the place of brokenness the place where death has worked in his life so that Christ's life might be released and so this morning it is with that prayer that I'm asking God to please help us and grant us insight into his word even though it's not a new word but we're asking for a fresh word from God isn't it we're asking that God will speak to us afresh though we may use the same familiar passages that you are used to we ask that God will breathe afresh upon his word and actually show us again the crucified life in the name of Jesus Christ there are few passages that I want you to please follow me to read I'll be reading them just to lay a general preamble and then we shall go ahead now you know in Exodus when God was talking about the anointing that all priests must have before they can step into the ministry something curious uh, was said that has caught my attention for quite a long time and I've been uh, watching it over and over and I've been praying Lord you must give me an understanding now if you turn your Bibles to Exodus Exodus chapter 30 Exodus chapter 30 and if you go to verse 22 you see something that was said but it's not the composition of the anointing that I want to talk about it is not what composes the anointing or the anointing oil that is my interest this morning but that there was something that God was pointing out that it's a matter I want you to look at moreover verse 22 the Lord spake unto Moses saying take thou also unto you principal spices or pure mare 500 shekels and of sweet cinnamon have so much even 250 shekels and of sweet calamus 250 shekels and of cashier 500 shekels after the shekel of the sanctuary and of oil olive and hin and thou shalt make it an oil of holy ointment an ointment compound after the art of the apothecary it shall be 
and holy anointing oil. And thou shalt anoint the tabernacle of the congregation therewith, and the ark of the testimony, and the table and all his vessels, and the candlestick and his vessels, and the altar of incense, and the altar of burnt offering with all his vessels, and the lava and his foot. And thou shalt sanctify them, that they may be most holy. Whatsoever touches them shall be holy. And thou shalt anoint Aaron and his sons, and consecrate them, that they may minister unto me in the priest's office. And thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel, saying, This shall be an holy anointing oil unto me throughout your generation. Verse 32. Upon man's flesh shall he not be poured, neither shall he make any other like it. After the composition of it, it is holy, and it shall be holy unto you. Whosoever compounded any like it, or whosoever put it, any of it upon a stranger, shall even be cut off from his people. Did you follow something? For Aaron and his sons to be consecrated as priests and for them to minister to me in the priest's office, they must be anointed. Isn't it? And they must be anointed with the holy oil of anointing which the word of God already explained how it must be compounded and all of that but when he was now speaking about how the anointing oil must be poured upon the life upon the uh, heads of Aaron and his sons God now said verse 32 upon man's flesh shall he not be poured verse 3 said or whosoever put any of it upon a stranger shall be even cut off from his people now, that's the first question that arrested my mind. Excuse me, please. If we wanted to anoint somebody with the oil now, where do we put it? Will he not, will he not come on his body? Eh? When we put it on his head. Eh? But then the Bible says, upon man's flesh, shall he not be poured. Which means, in that Bible verse, that man's flesh cannot mean the body. Eh? Eh? If the anointing oil is to be poured on somebody's head, then it can't be the body that they are talking about in that Bible verse. When they said, man's flesh, anointing must never come on it. Which means, the flesh and genuine anointing are not compatible. Which means, if a man is going to be a priest, and is going to bear an effective anointing on his life, anointing that will break the yoke, 
anointing that will release utterance of God's word. Anointing that will cause men to quake and break under the ministry of such a man of God. There was one critical hindrance that he had to deal with. What is that? Man's flesh. Man's flesh. Now, go quickly to Ecclesiastes. Let's quickly check Ecclesiastes. And then look at chapter 10. Ecclesiastes chapter 10. Verse 1 says, Dead flies. Does what? Cause the ointment of the apothecary to send forth a stinking salvo. So does what? A little folly. Him. That is in reputation for wisdom and honor. Dead flies cause the ointment of apothecary. And you will remember that that ointment of apothecary, when we read it in Exodus chapter 30, what is it? What is it? The anointing oil. The oil of anointing. And so the Bible again is saying. Death flies. We cause the anointing. To bring out what? A stinking savour. So also. Is a little folly. I was surprised that the Bible call it a little folly. A little folly. We cancel out great wisdom in a man that is in reputation for wisdom and honor. Again, what will be the dead fly? What will be the little folly that contaminates the anointing that has come upon a man that God has placed in honor and in ministry? What is that dead fly? What is that little folly that will cause the anointing, the, the ointment of apothecary to bring forth a very stinking savour, an irritating smell, something that God does not want to see. What would that be? What is that dead flies? What is that little folly that spoils the anointing? Upon the head of a man that has been reputed for wisdom and for honor, the honor of ministry, the honor of carrying the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Are we together? Are you following? Now, let's read furthermore. Because all I want to deal with this morning, I'm looking at why every minister that wants to carry an anointing for God must come to the cross. 
where this thing must be finished so that we can bear an anointing that releases a sweet savour everywhere and all the time as the Lord helps us. Strangely, in the book of Jude, Jude 23, but if I was to read from verse 21, it would have been wonderful. So let me read 21, 22, 23. Jude, keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. And of some, have compassion, making a difference. And others do save with fear. Pulling them out of the fire. Doing what? Hating even the garment spotted by what? By the flesh. Again, I want you to note that if the flesh was the body, if it was your human body, how can a man wear his dress on his human body and that garment will not touch it? Eh? So again we noted that God is not talking about what? About your body. God is talking about who? About the flesh. Say so even as you are helping others even as you are preaching the gospel, even as you are trying to get men and turn them to God and delivering them from the power of darkness and from the fire of hell, even you yourself must do what? Must hate a garment that is what? Spotted. Again, when they use the word spotted, what touches me is that there's a difference between spots and soak. If they are said, hitting the garment that have been soaked with the flesh, what would that mean? What would that mean? It would mean that the flesh was so much that it has soaked the garment. But God didn't talk about soaking. What did he talk about? Spotted. What's the meaning of spot? Just a little. Just a little. Just a little manifestation of the flesh. Just a little foolishness. Just like a little dead fly. It's enough to create a spot on your garment and to cause the anointing to do what? To bring forth bad smell and to cause the purpose of God to enter this honor. Even just a spot of the flesh. So when I look at all of this, there's an overwhelming cry in my heart. How will a man of God, how will a preacher, how will a, a pastor, a man that God has ordained to carry the ministry of the word of God, how will he be able to carry this anointing? And death flies will not cause it to begin to bring forth bad smell little folly will not bring all the wisdom and honor unto nothing and how with this holy garment holy garment of ministry the effort of ministry how will it not be spotted God is not talking about soaking because some of us you may say well 
I thank God. The flesh that is uh, that is interfering with my life. It's just a small spot. The flesh that is trying to spoil the anointing on my head. It's just one small dead flies. But that little folly was sufficient to nullify and cancel out all that could have been God's investment in our lives and ministry. Now, let's take some very quick examples before we move back to where we are going. And I want to take an example, just a very simple example this morning. And you may not think it's a big example, it's not too big, but it means so much to me as I want us to study the Bible together. Now, go to Matthew 16. Matthew chapter 16. Matthew and chapter 16. Yes. Are you there? Eh? Now, do you notice that the Lord Jesus Christ had gathered his disciples, especially the apostles, and he took them to Caesarea Philippi, and he asked them, who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? Do you remember that passage? That's uh, Matthew 16 from verse 13. But that's not what I want to point out. And you know when all of them said what they said? And Jesus said, but whom do you yourself say I am? Who spoke? Simon Peter. Simon Peter had a great revelation of Jesus. Simon Peter, he answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. What Simon Peter said was a great revelation. And actually, it was a great revelation on which God was going to build his church. He said, Upon this rock, Will I build my church? The gates of hell. Can you imagine a brother whom God has given a great insight, a great revelation to the word of God, a great revelation to the purpose of God, and Jesus was already so excited and said, yes, this is the rock on which I build my church. And I say to you, you also, you are what? You are Peter. And look at the word of God to him. And I say to you, thou art Peter. And upon this rock I will build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give unto you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Then he charged his disciples that they should tell no man that he was Jesus the Christ. From that time forward, this is where the matter I'm talking about will come now. From that time forth, began Jesus to show unto his disciples how that he must go unto Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised again the third day. Verse 22. Then Peter took him. Peter took him and began to do what? To rebuke him. How can you begin to rebuke your master? But I want you to see it now. Be it far from you, Lord. This shall not be unto you. But Jesus turned and said unto Peter. I want you to hear that. Get thee behind me. Satan. 
you are an offense unto me. Now look at the reason Jesus gave. What was the reason? For thou sufferest not the things that be of God, but those that be of men. Let me read that from another version very quickly if we can get it. Get thee behind me, Satan. You are an offense to me. For you are not mindful of the things of God, but the things of men. I want you to check another version, if you can get. Is there any other version? Brother, read. New American Standard, yes. You are not setting your mind on God's interests, but on man's interests. Any other version? Jesus turn around. Yes. Uh -huh. You are an obstacle in my way because this thought of yours don't come from God but from human nation. Talk. Talk. Did you hear? He said these thoughts of you he's not coming from God. Where is he coming from? He's coming from human nature. Listen. The human nature that has not been crucified even if you preach a powerful message even if you have a wonderful revelation that human nature will jump up. He said this thought of yours is not from God. It's from where? It's from human nature. This is how human beings normally think. You are an offense to me. You are a great obstacle to me. So my question was how can a man who is human how can he not think as a human being? He thought from the human nature, from the flesh. If it is an hindrance to God and to God's work, how can a man who is supposed to be doing God's work be also an obstacle? To what God wants to do. And thank God that it was Jesus that Peter spoke to, who was very, very sensitive as to say, What? Satan, get it behind me. You are an offense, you are a great obstacle to me because these thoughts that you are you are thinking now is not from God. Five minutes ago, you spoke the mind of God. Five minutes after, you are speaking the mind of a human nature. If it was not Jesus, who was highly sensitive in the spirit to know that, ah, this is from Mr. Flesh. If it was any other person that Peter who is highly respected as a man of God when he opens his mouth now talking for Mr. Flesh how shall we know? How shall we know? You like this that the other day you prophesied it's, it was from God but suddenly Mr. Flesh, the human nature, quickly turned. I 
and began to speak again from the human mind from the human nature how shall we know how are we going to be sure that every time you are speaking you are speaking from the Lord and not from human nature how are we sure that when you declare say, this shall not come to you You will not die any death. Which looks nice to human beings. How are we going to be sure it is not from the human nature? Which is an obstacle and an offense to God's work. I will tell you what Jesus immediately began to say after that that experience look at it but even though I would not have wanted to get into this immediately but let me read it so that you can follow but we hang it we will come back on it verse 24 then Jesus said to his disciples if any man will come after me let him do what let him deny himself. And take up his cross. And do what? And follow me. Now if you put your finger here. And you go to the book of Luke 9. Which was a similar report. You will see how the matter came. But because Matthew was quite sensitive, he brought that aspect so that we can see it. Luke didn't pick that, but he picked what the master said. Because if you read Luke chapter 9, are you in Luke 9? You will notice that verse 18, 19, 20, 21, 22 are we together? Was like a continuation of what was said in the discussion in Matthew 16. But you will notice that that aspect when Peter took him and rebuked him and began to say you will not die any death was not included. Have you noticed that now? Eh? Now oh, don't worry. That is the beauty of the gospelers. It is possible that Matthew was able to pick it. Because he was actually <laughs> among those twelve. So he heard, he heard. He heard when Jesus turned to Peter and said, Satan, get thee behind me. I'm sure that maybe Martin said was so surprised. Said, ah, 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 ah. What, did, what did this man say now that Jesus called him Satan? Which means anybody that is acting from the flesh, are you hearing me? Is as good as who? As Satan to the Lord. Maybe because you don't understand what the flesh does to the anointing. You don't understand what the flesh does to the doctrine of our God. You don't understand what the flesh does to the ministry. You don't know that the flesh is the greatest obstacle to the move of God in any place. 
you may not know that even a diocese may be scattered just because someone spoke a word from where? From the flesh. A whole hard season may be derailed. They have been going where, well, going where, well, going where, well, going where, well, and the spirit is about to walk. But there is this man. is always speaking by the spirit but now he has been hijacked by the little folly of Mr. Flesh and has become an obstacle to the move of God so when Jesus said you are an obstacle you are the greatest offense to me because these thoughts of yours is not from God it's from human nature Satan Go away from here. I imagine that Peter was a student saying, hey, you mean Satan has quickly used me now? And yet Satan that has done that work was only engaging what? The human nature, the flesh. Mr. Flesh is an ally to Satan any day. Whenever the flesh is at work, Satan already has a hook. So if a man of God will not experience what, what brings Mr. Flesh down and finishes it, that man, we can't trust him. He can preach hot in the morning. And just by the time we are sharing the grace, the flesh may take over. So Luke just went straight. Look at how Luke now put that verse. And he said to them all, in verse 23 if any will come after me let him do what let him deny himself take up his cross once a week once a month when should he take up his cross daily as if the only way you can serve God and serve him correctly is to be crucified is to carry a crucified life a life that gives no space for Mr. Flesh a life that does not tolerate even a little dead fly A light that is so sensitive not to the soaking of the flesh but to what? The spot. 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 When they use the word spot it means a little dot. A little dot. Because what I'm saying with Peter here excuse me is that a big thing? Talk to me. Did Peter go to fornicate? Did Peter steal money? And yet what he said from human nature was as equal as Satan. So I saw Jesus saying, if any man wants to come after me, if you really, really want to work with me, if you want to serve my purpose, let him do what? Let him deny himself 
and take up his cross. I said once a month, eh? Once a week, three times a week. When he's going to church, where should he take up his cross? Daily. And follow me now. Let me beg someone to help us read that Luke nine twenty three from the Amplified Bible Version very quickly. If any man wish to come after me, let him deny himself, disown himself, forget himself. Wait, 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 wait. Are we reading the Bible? That any of you that honestly want to serve God, and he was talking to his disciples, he was talking to apostles, he was talking to those that were going to carry the anointing on the day of Pentecost. Those to whom he's going to commit his ministry. Those to whom he said, I will give you the keys of the kingdom, whatever you bind there on earth. God began to say, look, Peter, sorry, I wanted to give you the keys of the kingdom, but not as you carry Mr. Flesh about. If any one of you wishes to come after me, Baba, please start again from that verse 23. He said to them all, Who wants to come after Jesus? Let me see your hand up. You want a ministry that actually manifests the power of God. Let me see your hand up. You don't just want to be playing in the ministry. You don't just want to be joking on the pulpit. Let him deny himself. What does it mean to disown? Eh? To lose ownership of yourself. To disown yourself. Yes. To forget himself. Tell somebody by your side, say, do you want to follow Jesus seriously? Forget yourself. Forget yourself. If you are not ready to forget self, you will be an obstacle to Jesus and to his ministry. You will be on the pulpit serving Satan. And the devil is so happy that he will look for somebody that looks so close to Jesus like Peter and make him his own mouthpiece. Brothers and sisters, they crown my heart. What is it that has weakened the church? What is it that has made the church almost empty and powerless? Because those who are supposed to carry the anointing, the flesh has contaminated it. When you see them speaking, they will say one statement that looks as if it's from heaven. The next five statements is from Mr. Flesh, an obstacle to Jesus. An offense to his program on earth. Let him forget himself. Yes, sir. You must lose sight of yourself. Lose sight of himself, yes. And his own interests. Excuse me. Have you lost sight of your interest in the ministry? Are you on the pulpit only pursuing your own interests? Are you in the ministry only protecting and promoting and projecting self?
Yes, sir. He must refuse himself. That even when service say, give me a little space, give me a little space. You say no. He must say no to self, no to himself. I say no. Myself, no space. Myself, no chance. Yes, sir. Uh -huh. Daily. And follow me. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. In dying. Talk. Self. Giving a little space, even as a small spotty, is enough to destroy the honor and the glory of the ministry. If God wants to pour anointing, the first thing he said, upon man's flesh it must not be poured. But the trouble now is, could someone have been so broken for the anointing to come on his life and God began to use him? But because he has not understood the daily cross, the crucified life, a life that is constantly under the ministry of the cross, a life that cannot give space to Mr. Flesh even for one second, even such a man of anointing, we cannot vouch what can come out of his mouth. So you now see brothers that God started using mightily. They have turned. They have turned. They speak bogus. But when you listen carefully, and if you listen to Jesus, Jesus said, Satan, get thee behind me, you are not stopping. That thing you are saying is not from God. It's from human nature. But before I come back here, because this is a critical matter this morning, that to preach Christ crucified, only those men and women who live the crucified life can do it. And why must it be the crucified life? It's because if there be any space for any aspect of the flesh that has not been brought to the cross, that has not been crucified and nailed to the cross, even if it's a little spot, it will spoil your garment. Even if it's a little dead fly, it will spoil the anointing. Even if it's a little folly, it will cancel out all the reputation for wisdom. And it will bring the work of God as if nothing had been done. So Jesus said, any of you, and he was facing those that he wanted to recruit for ministry, any of you that wants to come after me, you must say no to yourself. You must renounce yourself. You must forget yourself. You must lose sight of self and of your interests. You must renounce and give up all rights to yourself. You must put self aside. And take up your cross daily. Daily. And if you cannot do that. The master said I cannot. 
commit something serious to you. And you cannot be those that will push my kingdom agenda. I know you will still serve Satan against my will. Why is God wanting us to deal with this? At cleric. Because you are the foot soldiers. You are the people actually that are pushing the work of God. And if Mr. Flesh is not there with you in your life now, when you become a bishop, what kind of bishop will you be? Do you know that Mr. Flesh that looks small today because you are a small man, if it is not uprooted, the flesh that is not uprooted when you are small, when you grow big, what does it become? It becomes big, complicated, and sophisticated. The flesh that we don't uproot now, when you're at the lower level of the ladder, when you get up there, it becomes flesh promoted, flesh expanded, flesh, flesh enthroned. Why would Jesus quickly face Peter? This is the man that he wanted to use seriously. Say, get it behind me, Satan. I would rather not have this than keep you in my, in my company. So this morning, I want us to explore it so that we can pray together. So that we can study and say, oh God, what is your wisdom for us? When you go to Romans 8, Somebody should quickly follow me to Romans 8. There are little, little scriptures I found. And once I discover them, it, it hooks my heart. It makes me continuously, continuously, oh God, restless. I say, God, God, don't allow me to be an offense to you. And yet I know what can make a servant of God to become an offense to God. The flesh. Romans chapter 8. Are you in Romans 8? Eh? Now I want you to read. Now we're going to read from verse 6. I could have read it from verse 1, which is important. But I want us to read from verse 6. Or maybe from verse 5. So that we can get to verse 8. For they that are after the flesh. What do they do? They do mind the things of the flesh. They set their minds on the things of the flesh. But they that are after the spirit. They set their minds on things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is what? Is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is what? Is enmity against God. For it is not subject. It is not subject to the law of God. Neither indeed can be. So then, they that are in the flesh cannot do what? Cannot please God. The brother that read good news, can you stand and read for us again? Those who want, live, wait, wait, wait. Sir. You know what, what we are reading now? We read it in King James, said, those that are after the flesh. Is that not how we read it? Those who live according to their sinful nature. So you see, what we call the flesh, NIV calls sinful nature. Good news calls it human nature. 
This thing that we are talking about is just like just being be a normal human being. Eh, brother? It's normal human life. It's normal. That those who just live the normal human nature life. Who do what their human nature tells them to. Those who act according to what their human nature tells them to do. Those who operate from their sense particulars. Are you understanding? So brother, read on. Those who live as their human nature tells them to. Uh -huh. Have their minds controlled by what human nature wants. You see? Those who live as the spirit tells them to. Uh -huh. Have their minds controlled by what the spirit wants. Yes. To be controlled by the human nature results in death. To be controlled by human nature. That just, just to be a mere human being results in death. Yes. To be controlled by the spirit results in life and peace. Uh -huh. And so people become enemies of God. I want you to hear the Bible now. So people become enemies of God. When they are controlled by their human nation. Did you see that? So when Jesus said, Peter, you are an offense to me. Because this, your thought, is not from God. It's from human nature. That was all that made him Satan. And we're reading it again now in Romans. That those who are controlled or who does what their human nature tells them to do, they become enemies of God. Baba, read verse 7 again. Verse 7. And yes. so people become enemies of God uh -huh. when they are controlled by their human nature. Uh -huh. For they do not obey God's law. Yes. And in fact, they cannot obey it. Verse 8. Those who obey their human nature cannot please God. Those who obey their human nature cannot please God. They do. God, God cannot be happy with them. Whatever they are doing, even if they do it on the pulpit, it's an offense to Jesus. It's an obstacle to the purpose of God. Is a hindrance to where God wants to go. So this morning, if this matter that we are tracing all the way from Exodus, if it has been a great hindrance to what God will have done in, in our generations. What must we do with it? What is God's answer to it? That's where we need to take a little more. To study the word of God. Very quickly this morning. Before we go to the place of prayer. Wherever we stop now. We will continue when we take the next theme talk. The crucified life. It's only the life that can honestly preach Christ and preach him effectively. If that life is not crucified, Baba, you will eventually crucify Jesus the second time. And how many preachers by their lives according to their human nature, Mr. Flesh, they are putting Jesus Christ to shame. They are making the word of God a ridicule. Sometimes when you stand on your pulpit, somebody is down there who knew you when Mr. Flesh was with you and you were walking in the flesh with her. He said, what does he want to say here?
sometimes when you hear the comments of the children of the of the world against the word of God against the church but where is our mouth to talk they are talking about what they have seen what they have experienced what has happened and we cannot say it's not happening so what is the way forward let me ask you to read another familiar passage we need to read familiar passages because I found this matter all over the word of God and it's as if genuine ministry does not begin for any man until this matter is resolved even if we pamper it and say no 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 let's continue it doesn't matter it will become the matter Even if we say, well, brethren, let's just, let's not be talking too much about this thing. And, you know, let's talk about something, seven steps unto breakthrough. When you have not dealt with master flesh, for every one step towards breakthrough, Mr. Flesh gives you three steps unto breakdown. Follow me again. Let's read Galatians. Because we need to get to Galatians to now see where we are to go. In Galatians, and the entire book of Galatians had been very, very deliberate in dealing with these issues. But in chapter 5, we come to a very critical point in chapter 5. Please come to Galatians 5. Verse 13 says, For brethren, you have been called unto liberty. Only what? I'm not hearing you. Only use not liberty for an occasion to who? To the flesh. What do you think that scripture is meaning? That the flesh is always looking for an advantage. the flesh is not dealt with it will take advantage even of your liberty even when you have done something that looks nice the flesh is sitting there and say how can I collect the glory if something good has happened in the, in the, in the church and it is because your associate pastor or your, or your junior pastor was the one that God used to do something. And you notice that everybody is happy. And you notice that God has moved. But Mr. Flesh inside of you say, this is how the people will forget that the venerable is on seat. Just for them to say, let our father in the Lord, the venerable, let him now bring the closing remarks and bring the blessing and benediction. Because without his blessing, this service cannot continue. Mr. Flesh takes occasion of that. So he comes up. I 
Alléluia. As I saw the young man preaching, and how every one of you are very excited. I was also very excited, except that there are certain issues that we need to put straight. And before I pray, so that this benediction can fall on your head properly. <laughs> uh -huh. It is not eloquence that we are talking about here. The young man is eloquent. We thank God for eloquence. But what of the secret life? Last week. Was I not settling the quarrel between him and his wife? Ruda almost packed out. I was there at 11 p.m. I thank God for eloquence. But eloquence without uh, soberness is equal to nothing. So may God bless all of you. May the Spirit of God go with you. May the countenance of the Almighty God rest upon you. And to the young man, may you learn humility and know how to. <laughs> what has he done now? He has finished it. The people will forget the message that the man has preached, isn't it? What will they be discussing as they are going? So he's beating his wife. Ah, 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 my God. Ah, ah, ah. Hey, some of these pastors said, hey, Ah, thank God for the venerable <laughs> who has taken the occasion the flesh and how many times what you said was not from God it was from the human nature and if if only People will hear what Jesus is saying. You will have heard how Jesus said, Get thee away from here, Satan. You are an offense to me. You are an offense to my work. You are an offense to this church. You are an offense to this, uh, to this archdeacon. The thoughts that you are thinking, is not of God. It's from the human nature. But because... People that are sensitive in the spirit are very few. They clap, so to say, for Satan. And the work of God is hindered. So that scripture says, Brethren, we have been called unto liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh. But by love, do what? Serve one another. For all the law is fulfilled in this one word. Even in this, thou shalt love your neighbor as thyself. But if you bite and devour one another, take heed that ye be not consumed one of another. Now we get to verse 16. This I say then. Walk in the spirit. And you shall not. Do what? Fulfill the lust. Of the flesh. The desire of the flesh. The agitation of the flesh. The pursuit of the flesh. The restless, the restless desire of the flesh. 
For the flesh. Are you now in verse 17? For the flesh. What does it do? Is always contrary. At log ahead. Against the spirit. The human nature. Can never cooperate. With the Holy Ghost. And the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary. The one to the other. So that you cannot do. The things that you would. Flesh will not allow you to be the man. That God wants you to be. Please brother. Help us read. Your good news again. Read verse 16 and 17. Before we go ahead. What I say is this. And this is what God is saying. Let the spirit direct your lives. Uh -huh. And you will not satisfy the desire of human nature. You will not satisfy the desire of the human nature. Human nature wants to be seen. Human nature wants to be known. Human nature wants to speak. Human nature cannot keep quiet. Human nature wants to manifest. Human nature wants to be pleasurable. He wants to be highly honored. He wants to be recognized. Human nature wants to have a big title. Human nature, ah, the desire of the human nature is, is endless. Yes, sir. For what our human nature wants is opposed to what the spirit wants. Did you hear that? What our human nature wants is what? Opposed. Is opposed. Is contrary to what the Holy Spirit wants. Yes, sir. And what the Spirit wants is opposed to what our human nature wants. Uh -huh. These two are enemies. These two. They are friends. And this means... Wait, wait. These two, they are friends. They are allies. They are partners. How can you, you, carry two enemies... Inside, inside one heart. What can you do? You will, you will die in crisis. How will you manage to be a mouthpiece for two enemies? How will you blow hot? For Jesus. And in another five minutes. You blow hot. For Satan. For the flesh. How can you do that? This is where. The matter. Has to be dealt with. Yes sir. These two are enemies. They are two. They are enemies. And this means that you cannot do what you want to do. You can't do what you want to do for if God. If the spirit leads you. Then you are not subject to the law. That's verse 18 now. Yes, sir. So we will now start to read our verse 19. And verse 19. Please, all of you, help me go. We are reading verse 19. Verse 20, 21. We are going to be reading this scripture gradually until we get to where we need to stop for this morning. He said, Now, did you see the word now in King James? Eh? Now, as if, let's, let's face the fact. Let's face the fact. Let's not claim that we don't know. Say now. The works of the flesh are what? Are manifest. Which are these? I want you to note the way the word of God said. Now, the works of the flesh are what? Are manifest. They are clear. Right. How did NIV put that verse 19? The beginning of verse 19. Baba, read now. Read loud. The acts of the sinful nature 
are obvious. What's the meaning of obvious? It's clear. It's plain. Don't say me, I don't know whether it's the flesh using me or not. We know it. They are obvious. They are clear. They are manifest. How did ESV, English Standard Version, how did they put it? Is there an ESV? They are evident. Thank you, sir. Evident. So, good news. How did they put the first line? does is quite plain what human nature does is what is quite plain is quite what plain there's no nothing to hide it's very clear when we see it we know it now the works of the flesh are manifest which are these Adultery. Adultery. When we see adultery, whether it's a pastor or the venerable or the uh, choir master that is involved, though he is married, but he's running after other girls, who is at work? It's the flesh. Even if he preaches fire in his mouth, we know that this man is a servant of who? Of the flesh. And is an offense to God. So say, ah, but people are repenting through his ministry. People are repenting. You don't know. Let me tell you. If 10 people repented, through the ministry of this womanizer. Are you hearing me? The day they discover that what he was telling them to repent from was what himself is currently doing. Let me tell you. They will become twice a child of hell. You are not hearing me at all. I said, if five came to the Lord, because a womanizer preached and preached powerfully. The day they discover that that same pastor is the one who is sleeping with the uh, church choir member. Let me tell you what will happen. Do you know what will happen? They will not only backslide they will backslide so much that they will be twice children of hell. They will say, no, 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 all these people are hypocrites. They are all hypocrites. They will not only stop listening to him, they will stop listening even to me. Every man that walks in the flesh is an offense to God and an obstacle to the ministry of Jesus. Did you think what you are doing secretly will not destroy the work of God? I tell you it will. Even if we didn't know for five years that you are the one who impregnated that woman the day that woman <laughs> will open up her mouth and say this baby in my stomach five years ago it was Reverend Mbedi that did it but he threatened me that if I talk, he will cause me with a cause of hell. That's why I kept quiet. May God punish him. The 
the day her story will come out five years after all that you did for 15 years immediately it's cancelled people say hey and I used to pay him my title. Ah, oh God, oh God, oh God. Ah, oh my title he has chosen, he has eaten. Go, go, turn it to sand in his mouth. They lose immediate confidence in the word of God. Their fear of God immediately evaporates. And the church is brought immediately into disrepute before their eyes. And I don't know whether you know that good news does not spread as bad news. A dead fly causes the ointment to do what? To bring forth a stinking sabo is spreads faster my brothers if you will not live the crucified life no matter how anybody pampers you you will still become an offense to the work of God Yes, brother, let's depend on him to read so that I can save my time. Yes. What human nature does. What human nature does is quite plain. Is plain. It shows itself uh -huh. in immoral, immoral, filthy, filthy, and indecent actions. That's what King James called adultery, fornication, uncleanliness lasciviousness let me tell you whether the adultery is directly with a girl or is on the internet whether this fornication is happening around your parish or you travel 300 kilometers to go and do it. You tell your wife, I am going to Enugu. And she thought you have gone to Enugu, but you went to Portacot. But in this day of GSM, how are you? Oh, fine, fine, fine. How is the journey? We are just getting close to night mile. All of those things. All of those things that may be covered by cleverness, it will eventually become an obstacle. Next time, the day your wife discovered her, the last time you said you are going to a new going, it was that what you went. Do you know what you have done now? You know what you have done now? You have destroyed her confidence. You have created inside of her permanent doubt. So even when you decide to do the correct ministry, you are canceling a lady. This time, you are in the spirit. What will your wife do? Your wife will come around and say, Otoge, Madam, please go, 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 go. My husband doesn't have time for you. Go, 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 go. You say, why are you spoiling my ministry? Who spoil your ministry? You, you spoil your own ministry before. A 
sister was talking the other day. I was home. I said, what are, what are you doing like this? He said, the way my wife, my husband, the way he, he carried his eyes and is looking at that sister and looking around her, her breast. I said, ah, ah. How, could you, how could you see how your husband is looking? He said, ah, I know, I know when she is doing that. Is. So I'm wondering, I said, ah. I turned to the brother. I said, brother. He said, well, you know, it's because uh, one time, one time, uh, it happened. So since then, my wife has never believed me again. I said, huh? You see now? Every walk of the flesh, you align your life. Even if it's a spot, it spots your garment. And you think you are promoting the ministry when heaven is saying this man is an obstacle to my ministry. Friends, we're, 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 we're going. Yes, sir. Yes, in, sir. Indecent actions. Indecent actions. In worship of idols. In worship, you see now, whether you see people worshiping idols, carrying masquerade in the village, or worshipping gold chain is the same Mr. Flesh. So the pastor who is on the pulpit, but he is interfering with other girls, and the man that is carrying masquerade in the village, who are they, please? They are equally servant of who? The flesh. And you have no authority of preaching. You can't preach to that masquerade man. Even though you may think you have, you can preach and say, those of you that are carrying masquerade, those who know, they say, why is he talking against masquerade? Me, I carry masquerade. I don't carry girls. Which one is worse? I carry masquerade, but I don't carry girls. You carry the castle, and you spoil girls. Judge between me and yourself. Don't preach to me here. You are all, we are all together. You are an offense to the gospel. Yes, sir. And witchcraft? Witchcraft. People become enemies, and they fight. When you see people becoming enemies and they are fighting, whatever they are fighting over, whether over position or over church posting, is the same man. Imagine how many malicious messages you are preaching on your pulpit because you thought that the posting they posted you was because somebody that you are quarreling with was the one that made it. How long will you do that? How many years do you have that you are expending precious years and the precious hours of church members wasting their years? They come thinking they will meet God or hear God. They only hear somebody who is bloating with bitterness. Even the Bible passage you quoted, we know where you got it from. It's not from the Holy Spirit. And the interpretation you are forcing the Bible to have now is not the Bible. We know it is that human nature. When people become enemies and they fight, that's the work of the flesh. Yes, sir. They become jealous and angry. They become jealous. And ambitious. Wait, sir. They become jealous. And they become angry. Now look at the Bible. The King James says, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, that's anger, strife, mm, quarreling, 
seditions, heresies. Now, when they were listing this thing, what was bothering me was well, that the Bible said, These are the works of the flesh. But I want you to read on, read quickly, and yes. then we need to finish up that. They become jealous, angry, and ambitious. Ambitious. They separate into parties and groups. They break into small, small groups and parties. Some have formed another church because they were supposed to be the, the regional hard CC. And when election was made, it happened that it is not, they didn't, they didn't elect him. He said, huh? If they think they can be cheating, cheating people from our own tribe, they will see. So you started speaking your local language. You gather people and speaking your dialect, dialect inside the church of God. You, you have created division inside the church of God. My people, my people. The rest of us are not your people. Because of selfish ambition. The body of Christ, the church, that missionaries came here and died to set up. You have now cornered it along your own ethnic tribal line just because you want to be president a church that has been running for, for over 100 years before you were born just because of your ambition to become the general superintendent or something you are not afraid to break the church You are not afraid to carve something out for yourself. And you create so much fight in the body of the Lord for whom you never shed your blood. Hi, you are an obstacle, an offense to the purpose of God. Every time Mr. Flesh manifests, it's the same issue. Say so the people become angry. And I imagine how some of you say, anger is just anger, it's just anger, it's just that anger. Do you know that anger is what will not allow Moses to enter the promised land? That great man that walked for God. He left Egypt. Are you hearing me? He could have been Pharaoh. He gave up all of that to become a prophet. But anger that was not dealt with. Anger that made him kill Egyptian. That made him to want to deal with his brother before they say who made you a ruler over us. Anger that, you know, continuously made him to break even the table that God wrote with his finger. That anger finally made him to strike the rock two times. And God said, I'm sorry. I told you you would get there, but you're now going again. I will still honor you by showing you where the land is, but you will never get there. Prepare to die. Because if we leave you like this, you will spoil many other things. It's better we just take you out now so that you don't spoil the work of God. And you say anger didn't matter. The anger that made you, when you are so angry, to slap your wife. Even though it is in your bedroom. And your wife came out with swollen eyes. And the young guest in the mission. He said, Mama, what happened? Mama, what happened? So that so that they will not disgrace you. She also learned to tell her, I said, hey, no problem, no problem. Hey, children, just go, just go, just go, just go. Mm. It's, I was praying, I was praying. Is she praying? When the children eventually knew that Papa used to beat Mama, can your message mean anything to them again? 
And you know, no matter how they kept quiet, one day, it will look like a joke. They say, <laughs> you are the one that says Baba is in the spirit. We thank God when he's on the pulpit. Baba is a great dramatist, but at home we know. The house can be hot sometimes. You just hear, boom! Sometimes we are behind the window. I will deal with you. Now, those children, can they have a correct marriage? Eh? You are an offense to what God wants to do. Finish up. Yes, sir. They become jealous. They become jealous. Angry. They become angry. Ambitious. Ambitious. They separate onto parties and groups. Uh -huh. They are envious. Envy. Get drunk. They get drunk. Have orgies. They have orgies. And do other things like this. What it means that this thing we have read now is not, ex is not exhaustive. And I want you to know that there's no how we can list completely what Mr. Flesh does. Even if your own is not in this list, you know. If we draw another list, you will see it there. <laughs> This is just a list. There are many other lists of the work of the flesh. But one thing I want you to know is that once it is the flesh, even you Joseph cannot pretend you know it is the flesh. Sometimes even the way you are praying is to cover up something. Sometimes when you notice that uh, you are hearing the footstep of somebody. You change the discussion. You say, Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Was that what you were saying before? You know it. But now, let's look at the word of God. The word of God now says, But the fruit of the Spirit, is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such, there is no law. You cannot be living in the spirit and you have any problem with anybody. That you are having problem with people that you are always agitated and there's a reason for quarreling and sleepless nights and sleepless nights is because something else is the one walking. The fruit of the spirit is you know I am happy to tell you when we started reading the works of the flesh ah! did you see that? That means there are many of it. And different people could manifest different kind of it. There are some that their only problem is anger. There are some others that their only problem is women. There are others that their own challenge is pride. There are others that their own challenge is cover up exaggeration they are manifest but when we come to the fruit of the spirit look at the bible say but the fruit of the spirit is that means if you are in the spirit we don't expect anything different you can't say well i thank god i have some fruit of the spirit there's only some that are not there it's not true the presence of one fruit of the spirit is the presence of all. Any man who is living in love is also patient. It's also temperate. It's not difficult to beg. He has joy in his heart. 
I hope you know that there is no angry man that is happy. Tell me. Talk to me. Is there any time you are angry and you are full of joy? Never. If you are smiling and laughing and laughing and laughing, when you see the person that you are angry with, what happens to all your laughter? Immediately, there's no, you can't hide it. You can't hide it. It will just jump up. Because <laughs> it, is a, it is something. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such, there is no law. Now, the last verse that we can take before we pray. He now says, and they. Did you hear that? Verse 24. And they that are what? That are Christ. What have they done? They have crucified what? The flesh and what? Alright. They that are Christ. Where is NIV? Yes sir. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the sinful nature. They have not that they will, not that they are planning to. They have. If you ever want to belong to Christ, it can only be the crucified life. If you want to follow Jesus Christ and serve Christ, it can only be the crucified life. They that belong to Christ Jesus, they have crucified the flesh with his passion and his desires. Thank you, sir. Where is the good news of that verse 24? to Christ Jesus those who belong to Christ Jesus have put to death they have put to death their human nation excuse me this is the matter those who belong to Christ Jesus because Jesus said if any of you wishes to come after me let him say no to himself let him forget self let him put self behind let him put self to death. And because the only means by which Mr. Flesh can be put out is by the cross. But this morning, before we go to be alone with God, it is time to honestly, honestly, and I use the word honestly very carefully, honestly, to go before God. Not to hide because it is human nature that we also hide. The flesh we prefer to cover up than to open up to God. But I want to tell you, sir, why I know it is difficult as a human being to open up before your church members. Who themselves are in the flesh and they are likely to take advantage to come and put their neck on their leg on your neck. So it looks all right to cover so that those one will not have mouth to talk. But is it also all right to cover it before God? Eh? Talk to me. Is it is also correct? To come before God and still pretend. That's why this morning, whatever you are going to help me to do to pray, we we'll say, okay, God, the crucified life that terminated every activity of the flesh, every obstacle to anointing, 
Bring me there. The first thing is never to hide. To say, Lord, now I can see where the mother is. Now I can see why my marriage is turbulent. Now I can see why we are not working together. I can see why there's so much struggle. I can see where the real issues are. It's not with the bishop. It's not with that other man. It's me. This thing is inside. This thing that is always boiling, 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 boiling. Baba, I drag him to the cross. So when we began to sing that song, in the cross, in the cross, a trembling soul. A trembling soul. Bring its sins before me. Cause my eyes to see what your cross has done to abolish this enemy that is dwelling inside. Satan is the enemy outside. Mr. Flesh is the enemy within. And I want you to know that the enemy within is more powerful and more dangerous than the enemy without. Am I right? The enemy within is the one that opens the door for the enemy without. No criminal can succeed to raid you if they don't have an informant inside. And the informant inside is the one that lives in your bosom. Is the one that contaminates and perforates and spoils what could have been a great work of God. Your struggles has been because this man has not given way. We go to God now. Say, Lord, near the cross, a trembling soul. We read it. Let me read it before you pray with me. Near the cross, that stands at two, a trembling soul. Love and mercy found me. There the bright and morning star sheds his beams around me. I come, O oh God, to the, to the foot of the cross this morning. I am saying now that to belong to Christ, it has to be a crucified life. If the flesh is not brought to the cross, my brother, it will spring up again. What we cover and we did not expose at the foot of the cross, it will grow again. May the Lord help us as we pray. So I will request you, you will stand with me in prayer. And then we will sing the song. We just sing stanza one and two. That's the one we can sing this morning. And as we sing it, we are going to be praying. And I don't want you to please do anything that will cover up the enemy. We are far away from our parishes. We are far away from those who can take advantage to ridicule us. We are before God who called us. Who selected us for this ministry. Who wanted to use us for his glory. And look at the flesh taking advantage. As we take these two stanzas. As we do so in prayer. If this morning. Your heart just say. How long will I hide? How long will I nurture a snake in my bosom? How long will I feed the enemy within who will always be contrary to where I wanted to go? I don't want to be a drunkard. But because Mr. Flesh, the drunkard has not been uprooted, sometimes it is the 
Holy communion wine that became your temptation to go back to drunkenness. Sometimes it is ministration laying hands on those women that drew you back onto the morality that you used to practice ever before you came into the ministry. This morning as we are praying, and all those who said, Lord, keep me near the cross. Get me to that place for the crucified life. Don't let me go out of Boko with this dead fly. To some, it is a spot. To some, it's just a little folly. To some, it's just a dead fly. To some, some say, my own is not a spot. My own actually, I am like a leopard. Do not to wash myself. But there is the blood of Jesus that is flowing. The blood of his cross that cleanses from all unrighteousness. I ask you to please draw near with a true heart. Please lift up your two hands as we now sing the last chorus. In the cross, in the cross, Lord. Please continue to pray as you are here. Continue to pray. Talk to God yourself. Continue to speak to Him. His presence is here. Love and mercy. God is here. Him that cometh unto me, I will in no wise cast out. His presence is here. Continue to speak to him. Continue to speak to him. As you embody yourself before him, you will see a new release. You will feel his hand upon you. And I want to request that all of us here, if you are led to do so, please pray for these brothers and sisters. Anybody who is sincere, as Bishop Sundays was sharing with us just this morning, you will know that it is not easy to struggle, as it were, with the flesh. Every minister must have that struggle. You will come to a point of crucifixion. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. There's no one who has not passed through the ex experiences of temptations, but God gives the grace to overcome. That is the testimony, the grace to overcome, the grace to have victory. Satan is always in the business of trying to drop drag the men of God into the mud. I want you to pray. God has given you the privilege, the opportunity to come out. I want you to believe him as he's ministering to you more and more. Yes. Believe him. I receive that peace as we are in his presence right now. Take a firm decision. And God will give you the grace. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we thank you for our brothers and sisters 
whom you have touched in a special way as you have touched every one of us this morning who are sincere enough and have come out courageously and by faith to receive that new anointing the anointing that will not be defiled they have come out again to receive a new garment that will not be soiled father we say as a church members of the body of christ here by the authority that have given to us that the enemy will think in whatever way he's operating and no matter how long he has existed is sent out this morning in their lives and they will not return the power of the enemy is broken over their lives in the name of jesus christ oh god breathe upon them the breath of life and fill them with life anew that they may do what you want them to do we thank you we thank you that lost joy of salvation god give back to them that peace which the world cannot give restore to them they will go out from here and they will do exploits for you and the glory will be yours father thank you father thank you in jesus name we pray amen Living Seed Media brings